the Lord. I appreciate that invitation. Uh, God has been good. Uh, has God been good to anybody in this house? Yeah. Amen. It's, uh, my goodness, you've come a long way, baby. Uh, I can remember the first time I preached at uh, Crossroads was in the theater. I remember preaching your first anniversary, and you had about 40, 50 people there. And God has been so good to each and every one of you. Uh, today I want to preach about uh, the blessings of God. But first of all, I want to say this is like being at home here. And I appreciate all your prayers. It has been a rough couple years uh, physically. Uh, but I believe I'm beyond all that now. And I'm stepping into a new season in life. I'll go ahead. Thank God for that. Amen. Uh, there was a man, he was 50 years old, and he was still living with his mommy. And it was a Sunday morning, and she was downstairs cooking breakfast, and she kept hollering upstairs, get out of bed, honey, you got to go to church. And she didn't hear anything moving, so finally she takes the broom handle, and she goes upstairs, and he's covered up, he's 50 years old, it's Sunday morning. And she keeps saying, honey, get out of bed. you got to go to church. And he said, mama, I don't want to get out of bed. Mama, I don't want to go to church. Don't make me go to church, mama. Then people don't like me. I don't like those people. They're mean to me, mama. Don't. She started hitting me with a broom handle. She said, get out of bed. Please, mama. He said, Mom, mama, give me one good reason i got to get up and go to church. She said, because you're the pastor. And you got about 20 minutes before church starts. <laughs> so this morning we're going to talk about walking in the blessing. When the blessing is on your life, is the blessing on anybody's life here? Give him a hand clap of praise if it is. When the blessing is walking on your, li your, your life, you will be empowered far beyond anything, anything at all that you can attain or accomplish in your own strength and in your own ability. When that blessing of God is on your life, I'm telling you, it is incredible. It was the blessing that empowered the men of Israel to conquer Canaan, the promised land. So this morning I want to take us to Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24. It said, Rise you up, take your journey, and pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thy hand Sion, the Amorite, king of Heshbon and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. This day will I begin to put the dread of and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven, who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. And I pray, God, that every heart would be open. Every ear would be open, God, ready to receive what you would have for us today. In Jesus' name, we pray and amen. So what is the blessing? The blessing of the Lord can be defined in several different ways. As the covenant of God, as the covenant, I'm a little bit tongue-tied, as the covenant of God that overrides the curse. It can also be described as the anointing of God through which divine favor flows, or the power of God to produce. The power of God to produce. The favor of God. I heard a man say many years ago, the favor of God is not fair, but it'll run you down. This divine empowerment was what they called the Eden blessing that was on Adam. While later became the blessing of Abraham and what God called the blessing of the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. It is the same blessing, do you hear me? By worldly standards, the Israeli army was not very intimidating. But Israel had God on its side. If God be for us, who can be against us? Can somebody say amen? amen? The important issue is not whether you are the biggest or whether you are the strongest. Whether you, the main issue is if God is on your side. 
38 years ago, my life was messed up from the floor up, but I had an experience at an old-fashioned altar where God touched my heart, wrote my name down in heaven, and has guided me ever since. I've never been the biggest, never been the strongest, but by God's grace and the favor of God, God has allowed me to be the head and not the tail. Somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. You know you're all dying to say, Woo! I don't have a lot of that on me anymore. So listen to me this morning. This blessing is to power you, empower you for success. No matter what your condition is when the blessing comes on you, it will turn your sadness into joy. It will change everything in your life. That's the power of the blessing that I am talking about. The blessing of Adam enabled him to rule the planet. It didn't matter how desolate any part of the earth had become. With the blessing, Adam could turn it into a garden of Eden. I come by this morning to tell each and every one of you, it doesn't matter what you are going through today. It doesn't matter how desolate, how dry that your marriage may be, your finances may be, your relationships may be. God has a blessing that can turn your dryness around into the favor of God. If you believe that, give him a hand hand clap and a shout of praise. Rich people, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, come on, that's pathetic. Look at your neighbor, the one you don't like, and say, neighbor, are you rich? Rich people are rich because of God's blessing. Genuine wealth is not determined by money and possession. You need to get that this morning. Many people have vast treasures in worldly things but have no peace in their heart and they're poor in every other way. I had an uncle by marriage. He was 89 years old when he passed away. When he was around 87, he shared with me and we had known that when he was about four or five years old, because of the depression, his mother walked him to a boy's home and left him at the front door, and he stayed there till he was around 18 years of age. Uh, when he died, uh, uh, he, we had built him, my wife and I, an apartment to live behind us. He said, I started out in life by myself, and I just guess I'll die in the veteran's home, nursing home, and we couldn't allow that, and we built him in a little place. Uh, and, and when he died at 18, I believe he had about $4,000 total to his name. But can I tell you, every morning he would get up in that little apartment and he would start his morning out with worship on his knees uh, and he would laugh all day and he would walk around singing. He was hard hearing and, and it, it was just amazing he, uh, he, the way he would make us laugh. But when he died, uh, he, he died a rich man. He only had a little over $4,000 to his name, but he could pillow his head every night and sleep and get up in the morning and have joy unspeakable and full of glory. He wasn't wealthy in the eyes of the world, but in God's eyes, he had it all. So I don't care how much you got in your checkbook. Uh, if you don't have the joy of the Lord, friend, you are poor, you are busted and disgusted, and today you can experience walking in the blessings of the Lord. Give him a hand clap and a shout of praise. Ho! Let me talk about Isaac. Isaac receives a hundredfold during famine. A hundredfold gets my attention. In Genesis 26, the blessing operated in Isaac's life. And there was a famine. In the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went up into Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerir. And the Lord appeared to him and said, now listen to this. It is great to have the Lord give you direction where to go. But sometimes it's even greater when God gives you direction where not to go. He said, go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed. We sang about a thousand generations. And I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. 
and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The decisions and the choices you make today do not only have consequences in your life, but in the life of your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. Let's jump down to verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. A famine arose in the land. I'd say Isaac back in that day was paying about $5 a gallon for gas for his camel. <laughs> famine in the land, probably the inflation on hamburger and every other thing. Isaac faced the loss of his ranch. Faced the loss of his farming business, his herd, his flock, and his crops. Isaac standing on the brink of losing his wealth. And Isaac weakened under the pressure. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't weaken under the pressure. So Isaac turns from the promised land and he starts to shift his herds and his flocks southward toward Egypt. Note what God gives a word of instruction and intervention in verse 2, and the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Whew! I don't know where you're planning on heading. I don't know what direction maybe you're planning on going. But maybe you need to pray about it and ask God if that's the direction he wants you and your family to go. Remember in the scripture that Egypt of that day was a symbol and a type of the world. And Canaan was the promised land, a symbol and type of heaven. My God, help me. As believers, never forsake the promised land of heaven. Never turn to what may appear to be better markets offered by the world. Because what the world has to give you is not a better market than what heaven has to give you. Listen to this word right here in Mark 4 and 19. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word of God and it becomes unfruitful. April 10th, 2021, I experienced standing in the death way, the door of death way. And my thought has changed a lot since then. And if it's not fruitful and if it's not of God, I don't want to go. I don't want to be a part of it. Isaac harvested a hundred times more crops than he planted in the same year. A hundred times more. Wow. Kind of reminds me of Crossroads Church. You have harvested more than a hundred times. This ministry has been blessed because of the blessing of God, because of the gift of God, and because of a man and a woman and a family that had a vision that would lead this ministry into the greatness that it's in. Don't ever forget where the gift come from. The gift came from God and keep walking in the blessing of God. If the blessing of God is upon your church, then the blessing of God is upon you. And all you got to do is make the choice uh, to be obedient and to walk in the blessing of God that is on your church, that is on your pastor, that is on everyone in this room. And God is no respecter of persons. And God will bless you the same as he has everyone else. Someone give him a hand clap and a shout of praise. Oh, when the blessing starts working in your life, you can't hide it. I tried. I honestly tried. God would bless us. We would be growing and I, we'd be build, building bigger buildings and doing different things. And people would come and say different things. And, and I'd try to be all just, you know, try to hide the blessings. If God is blessing you, don't be cocky. 
Don't have an attitude toward it. Don't be prideful, but don't hide the blessings of God. Let them know how your father loves you and how your father cares for you and how your father has blessed you and give him all the honor and him all the glory. Can you do it one more time and give God a hand clap? You got to study God's word to learn what it has to say about the blessing. You got one life to live. Why would you want to wait till you're about ready to die to learn about the blessings of God? You got to study it. You got to meditate on it. And when you wake up in the morning, you need to practice it. You need to say, I'm blessed. You need to say, I am blessed. God must be your only source. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you this morning? When God is not the only source of your expectation, you will end up in frustration every single time. I want to read to you out of Psalm 62, verse 5, New King James Version. The psalmist wrote, My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. God wants us to totally depend upon him and totally trust him. I'm standing before you and I'm being transparent. I have not always put all of my trust in God. There is times that I battle this flesh that I think that I can do things on my own. And when I do things on my own, I get myself in trouble. And this is why the Lord said in Jeremiah 17, 5, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. And make the flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Verse 7, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Two kinds of people are contrasted right here, the wicked and the righteous. The wicked, specifically Judah, trust false gods in military alliance instead of trusting God. And they become barren. And they become unfruitful. The righteous place their confidence in God. So they flourish like a tree that is planted by the water. And listen to Psalms. One, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And there shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth much fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he shall doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. They're like the chaff which the wind driveth away, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So I want to encourage you this morning, Crossroads, be faithful for the whole journey, even when things aren't going well. When it seems like all of hell shows up on your front porch, just be faithful. When the Lord introduced himself to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 and 1, and when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am Almighty God, and before me, walk before me, walk in the blessing, walk before me, and be thou perfect. What is God saying to Abraham? God is saying, Abraham, I've got all that you need. Crossroads Church, God is saying to every family in here, I've got all that you need. God has never planned for his children to go around on this world, this earth, begging for provision. Even during an economic slump where we're paying maybe $5, I'm driving a diesel truck, I stopped the other day at Fairmont, and it was $6.20 a gallon, and it cost $175 to fill that truck up, and I about got slayed in the spirit right there at the gas pump. (laughs) Even during a crazy political time, God can still bless us. 
even during a messed up culture. I looked at my wife driving over here today and I said, honey, I had a lady come to me at church the other day and said, she's a school teacher, that they have kids in their schools identifying as a cat. As a cat. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, meow. I'm, 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 I'm just telling you what I've been told. My wife said, yeah, it's true. Said they got kitty litters in the bathroom. Identifying as a cat. So I've decided that if everybody can identify however you want to identify, I'm going to identify as a skinny person. <laughs> so you can call me trans slender. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. What a messed up time. So let's not live, <laughs> help me Jesus. Let's not live according to the culture. Let's not live according to a recession. Let's not live according to a messed up political system. Let's live according to heaven's identity, heaven's economy, heaven's political king of kings and lord of lords. Nobody above him. Give him a hand clap and a shout of praise. With the blessing of God, you're going to live long and you're going to live strong. Yeah. Psalms 91 is commonly referred to as the protection psalm. It's a promise. But who is that promise made to? In Psalms 91 and 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dwelling refer, refers to a permanent residence. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Now listen to this. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Cover. He shall cover you. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 16, with long life will I satisfy him and will show him my salvation. God is a refuge. He's a shelter in a time of storm. Stay under the shadow. Stay under the shelter. The writer's faith in God as protector would carry him through all the dangers and fears of life. Stay under his covering. Stay under the shelter of the almighty God. To do this, we must abide. We must dwell. Shelter is a place of protection. Shelter is a place of covering. Shelter is a place of security. Shelter is a place of rest. The use and function of an umbrella. And it works and provides these things only when you stand under it. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? The word dwell means physically. It means emotionally. It means spiritually. It means financially. James 4 and 8 said, uh, come near to God and he will come near to you. When the blessing is operating in your life, uh, you will walk in the secret place. Uh, you will walk in the shelter. You will walk under the protection of God, of his safety with daily communion with God. 
The verse 7, a thousand shall fall at thy side and then 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I just feel like preaching this morning. you got to stay under the shelter of God. You can't go your own direction. You can't go where the culture takes you, where the political people take you. You've got to stay under the dwelling of the almighty God. I feel like it's going to rain the favor of God on your family. You've got to stay in the presence of God. Don't get outside the covering of God. That's where the world wants you. That's where the famine will rise and step into your life. You stay under the shelter of God Almighty. Can someone stand and give God a hand clap and a shout of praise? Oh! Somebody give him a shout. Come on, we can do better than that. Oh, come on, bless the Lord. Has God been good to anybody? Stay with me. Can you stand? Can you stand? I'd like to preach five more minutes. Five. I said I'd like to. That don't mean. Divine favor follows the blessing. The blessing empowers you to receive divine favor. But you've got to speak it. You've got to talk it. You got to speak the things that are not as if they were, huh? You got to say, "I'm blessed." Can you can you even say that? Can you can somebody say, "I'm blessed"? Thank you. Unexpected. You got to speak it. You got to say, "I'll be the one to get your promotion." <laughs> I was about 20 years old and I was laid off, and I heard they was going to hire at the Clarksburg Airport. Hey, can I tell you that's a long jump? So I went up there, uh, somebody told me they unlocked the doors at 5.45 a.m. And 5.45 a.m. I was there. And the man came, I'd never seen him before in my life. And he unlocked the door and he said, can I help you, sir? And I said, yeah, I need a job. He said, well, we're going to hire, but not yet. We don't know exactly when. I said, all right. I'll come back tomorrow. 21 days at 5.45 a.m. When he unlocked that door, I'm standing there. It's a true story. I need a job, sir. After the 21st day, he said, well, we got permission to hire someone. And guess who they hired? Because I've been there 21 days. Huh? Nobody else had done that. So he took me in for the interview, and he said, where do you see yourself in two years? I said, in your chair. <laughs> kind of set him back a little bit. I said, sir, not because I'll undercut you, backstab you. I'll serve you. But when they promote you, then I'll take your chair. Guess what happened a couple years later? He got promoted, and I took his job. I'm going to stay under the blessing. We started Jewel City, eight, Jewel City Church 38 years ago in a garage with 23 people. We built a first altar and a platform with used lumber and bent nails. True story. But I stayed underneath the shadow. Divine favor has followed me, and I'm not bragging on me at all. I barely made it out of high school. I had a girl I sat beside of for four years. One time I handed her my test paper as I did every time, and she looked at me and she said, could you at least put your name on it? I said, no, I'd rather you do that. Not bragging. Kids don't go home and do that, all right? Favor is not fair. you got to speak that unexpected finances will come in your life. You got to speak abundant increase in every area of your life, every area of your life. My wife and I have been married almost 25 years. You think I ain't in the favor of God? She's beautiful. Beautiful. Some of you think when we walk in here, how that fat old guy that sweats all the time, how'd he get that model? That's how. Huh? We're going to celebrate 25 years. I want to close this morning about speaking about the blessing of the blessings. There's only one blessing and it contains the power to unleash unlimited blessings. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. 
Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything. The Lord will guarantee, my goodness, a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouses with grain. Your Lord God will bless you in the land He is giving you. If you obey the commands of the Lord, if you obey the commands of the Lord your God and walk in His ways, the Lord will establish you as His holy people as He swore He would do. Then all of the nations of the world will see that you are people claimed by the Lord. and You will stand in all of you and they will stand in all of you. The Lord will give you prosperity, you, in the land he swore to you and your ancestors to give. Blessing you with many children, numerous livestock, and abundant crops. The Lord will send rain at the proper time for his rich treasury in the heavens and will bless all the work that you do. You will lend to many nations, but you will never need to borrow from them. If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you will always be on top and never be on the bottom. The blessings cover everything that you need and everything that you desire. The blessing of the Lord will empower success for you in your ministry, in your career, in your marriage in your finances, in your children. The, the blessing of the Lord will empower you for success because He cares about you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. My wife would bring me that towel, please. Every head bowed and every eye closed, please. Examine your hearts here today. And I know the Lord has been faithful. And the Lord has blessed you. Are you walking in the favor? Have you thanked Him? When we think about what's going on in Ukraine and around the world, and you and I rolled out of a comfortable bed this morning, we got in a car with air conditioning, most of us. No one's looking for a meal the rest of the day. You've got it prepared. The Bible said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. If you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Jesus, you've never prayed and asked Christ to forgive you of your sins, then friend, you have no clue about the favor of God, no matter what you have in your life. Jesus loved you so much that he gave his life that you could have life and not just favor and blessings when you enter into eternal life in heaven, but the very moment you ask Christ into your life. If you're here today, I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to single you out. But if you have never prayed and asked Christ to forgive you of your sins, and you would like to ask Christ to forgive you today, you'd like to become a child of God and a member of His family, slip your hand real high and say, Pastor, just slip your hand real high. I see your hand. Somebody else? I see your hand there in the back, sir. Somebody else? Somebody else? Somebody else? I see your hand, young man. Somebody else? Somebody else? Then I want you to, as every head is bowed, to raise your head if you raise your hand. Look right at me, please. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And pray this prayer with me and mean it from the bottom of your heart. Lord Jesus, today I ask you to forgive me of my sins and from this day forward Lord I will do my best to live my life for you I repent of my sins I'm sorry help me Lord grow me in Jesus name can we put our hands together and welcome them to the family of God bless the Lord somebody give the Lord a shout hallelujah hallelujah if you prayed that prayer today, I ask you to please.
Tell somebody about it before the day's over. Don't be ashamed of it. Shoot your pastor a text. Tell some of the staff. Give them your name where they can follow up. Now, if God has been so good to you, and you know he's been good, raise your right hand. If he's been double good to you, raise your right hand and your left hand. If he's been incredible, raise both hands and one foot. If he's been awesome, raise both hands and both feet. Let's give him a hand clap of praise.